Hello, I'm Simon. I'm the Minister of Wallingford Baptist Church here, and you are very welcome to join us. It is Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church, and so I thought I would bring a birthday cake to celebrate when the church began on that first Pentecost almost 2,000 years ago. So I'm really glad you could join us for this celebration of the birthday of the church. Can we blow out the candles before the wind blows them away? As we remember on that first Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended like tongues of flames on each of the disciples. The wind that is blowing these candles, there was a huge hurricane wind that came within the house and the disciples were filled with the passion and fire and love of Jesus that changed the world. Let's celebrate that as we blow out these candles. Fantastic. It is great to see celebrate the birthday of the church and we are beginning to see more and more people turning to the church in this time of national crisis with a lot of questions being answered with a lot of lament with a lot of grief in this period of lockdown we're asking some big questions and one in four now are tuning in to online services so you're welcome if this is the first time for you to tune into a service you are particularly welcome and please let us know so that we can make you feel welcome I'm told that there's a 55 in, 55% increase in the number of Bibles that were bought in April from Eden. Three million people, new people, are turning to prayer at this time. And I don't know whether you've seen this great song, The UK Blessing, which now over three million people in the UK have seen and have testified it's uplifted them. People are turning to God at this time. And the great news is on this day of Pentecost that God has come to us in our crisis, in our lockdown. He comes to us with his love and compassion to set us on fire, to reconnect us with him and with one another and to really make change to our world. That's what happened the first Pentecost. And we're gl so glad you've joined us that you can experience that same power, that same love and passion of God in your time of crisis, in your lockdown. So come on in as we celebrate the birthday of the church, but more than celebrate it, we want to see it happen again in our time. We want to connect afresh with God and with other people and with a power that God makes available for us. So as we celebrate, let's join the church. Come on in. How has the Holy Spirit changed me? When I first became a Christian, I went on an Alpha course and my mind had realised how good the evidence was for Jesus and the life that he lived and the things that he did. Um, but the thing that changed it for me was when I prayed that the Holy Spirit would come into me, come and dwell in me. And he did. It was like electricity and love in its purest form coursing through my body. And that changed me forever, my experience, for the better. Twelve years ago, I had a powerful experience of the Holy Spirit. My t then 13-year-old son took my hands and told me he'd become a Christian. And at that moment, a kind of whoosh went through my body. It really felt like those metaphors of springs bubbling up that you get in the Bible. And I was instantly healed of a spiritual depression I'd been suffering from for the previous 18 months. That's become the bedrock of my faith. Now, anytime I'm tempted to doubt, I can look back and think, well, I know that was real and it's made my faith much stronger. I've been a Christian for nearly 60 years and any resemblance I might bear with my Saviour Jesus Christ is solely due to the gracious work of the Holy Spirit who has been wrestling with my will for these years. And in recent times, the Holy Spirit blessed me with a gift which I'd wanted for a long time, and that is to see people healed through prayer with the laying on of hands and the anointing of oil. How has the Holy Spirit changed me? I'd say one of the main differences would be that I have a sense of inner peace, that although life is still scary, the future can be uncertain, things can be challenging, 
I know that God is in control, that love will win at the end of the day. Hey, Flynn. So what do you think about the Holy Spirit, Flynn? Uh, what do you I think love, about Jesus and God? I love Jesus. I like talking to him. And I think the, that voice, that Holy Spirit's guidance will get stronger the more you lean into Jesus, the more Jesus will then lean, lean into you. And many times over the last few years in my journey as a Christian, I have felt that voice stronger and stronger and it has guided my actions and and, and uh, made me in a way do the right thing and do the the right thing by myself and other people and i believe that's uh, god's will for all of us i think when i was younger i really didn't understand who the holy spirit was and why i needed him and coming to understand that he's a person who's with me and who i need just as much as i need the father and jesus um, has really changed my life and understanding that i need to ask for more of him as well and just keep on asking for more filling of the Spirit. Um, he's my helper to understand Scripture and to apply it to my life. He's an enabler who gives me a call and a vision and helps me do things that I couldn't do humanly, like um, leading worship and um, dealing with spiritual attack and um, dealing with grief. And the Holy Spirit kind of burst in on the scene quite a few years ago now and at the time it was uh, like a tidal wave of emotion um, excitedness um, butterflies um, but as the years have gone on I, I still have those moments of excitedness and butterflies but also there's a sense of um, knowing now of, of understanding of um, expectation that when I speak um, to the Holy Spirit when I'm praying and I'm asking that I have expectation that the Holy Spirit will work in in the situation that I'm praying into and I just have to trust that God knows best thank you bye what does the Holy Spirit mean to me well, I couldn't have been born again if the Holy Spirit hadn't convicted me of my sin. That's where it all began 60 years ago when I was 17. <laughs> then two years later, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that enabled me to use spiritual gifts in my devotional life and also in my ministry. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What does the Holy Spirit mean to me? The Bible says that we have all sinned and I am thankful that the Holy Spirit showed me as a teenager that I needed to ask forgiveness and turn around and live my life for Jesus. The Holy Spirit has given me all that I need to live a life in victory and not defeat. He is with me always to guide and keep me on the right path. This he does through feeding on his word and digesting it. Welcome to our morning worship. As you can tell from the echoey sound, I'm here on my own as all churches were still shut down. But we believe that we are connected by the Spirit of God. And I believe that as we gather on this Pentecost Sunday, that we can all experience an outpouring of God's Spirit to refresh us. There's a lovely verse in Acts chapter 3. Verse 19. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything as he promised. And we are a people of hope, knowing that however difficult times get, we know that Jesus is coming again and is going to restore all things. But we also recognise that we need God's refreshing. And I believe on this Pentecost Sunday as we gather, that God's Holy Spirit wants to come and refresh you. And to fill you with the life and love and power of God. 
I believe he wants to come and let you know that God is for you. And that as you allow him into your life, he will refresh and transform you. I love it on that first day of Pentecost, as Acts records, that the tongues of flame separated and landed on each of the disciples. Because the Holy Spirit comes and fills us as individuals. And we may be separated, but actually God's Holy Spirit can fill you right where you are in your homes and bring refreshing. The only qualification this verse tells us is that we turn to God and we come in repentance and we come asking for him to fill us with his spirit. So let's do that right now. As I don't know about you, but I need refreshing. And maybe you've never encountered God before. We well, just need to come to him. Come in repentance. Come and receive his forgiveness. And allow him to refresh you. Maybe wherever you are in your journey, you can simply say a prayer like this. Lord Jesus, I come to you. Because you died on the cross, I recognise that you can forgive my sins and my selfishness and my pride. But I come back to you saying I need you. I need your blessing. I need your favour. I need your refreshing. So I'm sorry for when I've ignored and rejected and abandoned you. But I turn to face you now. And because of Jesus I ask you to accept me. And I ask you to refresh me by filling me with the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, refresh my body, soul, mind and spirit. Because Jesus died to forgive my sins, he rose again to give me eternal life and he ascended into heaven so that the Holy Spirit could refresh me with the love and life of God. Come, Holy Spirit. And as we receive that refreshing of the Holy Spirit, it fills us with the love, life and joy of God. And it causes us to overflow with our emotions of worship and love and praise. And so that's what we're going to do now. And we encourage you not just to watch, but to participate in our worship. As filled with the Spirit, we just want to praise God for his refreshing, for his love, for his forgiveness for us. So I'm going to hand over to our worship group as we sing Praise is Rising. And I believe Praise is Rising on this Pentecost Sunday across our country. Praise is Rising. Hearts are turning to you and allow your heart to turn to God that you may receive his refreshing. Thank you, let's worship together. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Washed away.
washed away, washed away. That is who you are. You are 
way you make a miracle work A promise keep the light in the darkness My God, that is who you are 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 That is who you that is who you are. One of the strangest things about the birthday of the church and that day of Pentecost is when the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit, they started praising God. Nothing too unusual about that, but they started praising God in languages that they hadn't learned or didn't understand. And they started speaking in other languages or speaking in other tongues. It's still a gift that can be used in the church today to praise God when people praise God in languages that they haven't learned or understand. But on that day of Pentecost, God used that to go into the temple where people had gathered from all over the world. And they could understand what these disciples couldn't, that they were praising and worshipping God. Wouldn't it be amazing to be able to uh, uh, be able to speak a language uh, that you didn't learn? I really struggled with languages at school. Uh, I did a bit of French. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Pastor Simon. Ça va? How's your French? Any replies? I don't know about. Do you know any German? Guten Tag. Or any Spanish? Hola. I don't know what your languages are. But perhaps on that day of Pentecost, when they were speaking languages, they were speaking messages like this, perhaps. Forgive my uh, uh, vocab and forgive my uh, pronunciation. Tan seni sevio. De te ama. Juvus vu emi. Dios te ama. Ek is lif verju. D-O-T Amma. They all, hopefully, it probably didn't, and with my pronunciation, were saying, God loves you. And that's what these disciples were declaring, the amazing nature of who God is and his mercy and his favour upon them. And so they started worshipping God in all these languages. Must have been amazing to hear and see. And when people today, when we sing in languages as part of our worship that we haven't learned, it can be a very beautiful and edifying experience. But it does seem a bit strange that God used them to speak in other languages. I think it goes back to Genesis chapter 11, one of the first chapters in the Bible, which talks about a story that happened called the Tower of Babel. Because in that time, they all had one language. And so as God had called, told them to call upon him and to worship him in their lang one language, and he also called upon them to fill the whole earth. But as people gathered, they decided that they didn't want to call upon God. They wanted to make a name for themselves. They wanted to build monuments for themselves. They also didn't want to fill the earth. That sounded entirely dangerous and difficult. And so they decided to build a city, to stay together, to support one another together. That doesn't seem too bad. But they also decided to build a tower, a tower that reached to the heavens to make a name for themselves so they could be like God. And so as they built their tower, they were saying to God, we don't want to worship you anymore and we don't want to obey you. They were looking for their safety, for their security, for their purpose in somewhere other than God. And it was going to end in disaster and more evil and selfishness and greed. And so when they built their towers, do you like my towers here? I built my, uh, my towers here. I built my tower out of the Yenga blocks, huge tower. I also built my tower out of chairs. When I was younger, I used to have a game called chairs, made up of little chairs that we had to balance to build a tower. I couldn't find it at home, so I thought, hey, why not? Let's use real chairs. Don't try this at home, health and safety. But here we are, building tower. And in the Tower of Babel, they're trying to build a monument for themselves to see how great they are. It was very selfish. It was very inward looking. They weren't worried about others. And so they tried to build this tower. Should I try and build it higher? 
Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Will I manage to build it higher? Let's find out. I am impressed. Look at that. You probably can't see it. It's so high because it's a huge jump. A huge tower. It made a bit of a mess. And the Tower of Babel was never completed. It was a monument to their achievement. It wasn't honouring God. It wasn't obeying God. And so God caused confusion by not allowing them to understand each other as they spoke in other languages. And as we come to Pentecost, God is reversing that. He's saying, I want to bring people back to worshipping me and knowing that I favour them and want to bless them and help them. And I want to enable them not to feel, want to protect themselves, but to go and fill the earth with God's love and blessing. And that's what Pentecost is all about, the reverse of the Tower of Babel, that Christians filled with the Holy Spirit know that we're created to worship God and worship him alone. And we are filled with our love and a desire to know God as our Father and to worship and trust him. And we also want to go and be obedient to him. And so what I want you to do going forward as we remember this story of the Tower of Babel, the challenge to what it means to ignore God and his and worship of him, what it means to live our life as we want, to put ourselves in charge ourselves. I want you as we go forward, particularly if you've got families, I want you to see if you can build a tower. And we can build a tower. You can do it two ways. You can either get some newspaper, put them in cylinders and see the biggest tower you can get. Or you can take some spaghetti some marshmallows and see you combining the two if you can build a tower. It could get quite messy. They won't be great, but actually when we try to make monuments to ourselves and forget God and not obey God, actually our monuments are not that great. So feel free to continue to do that and let's remember that God wants us to fill the whole earth with his love and goodness. And as a church, we support the Baptist Missionary Society as a way of seeking to bring the love of God across the world. And at this time of COVID-19, the BMS are seeking to help people across the world, bringing not only the message of God's love and favour, but seeing that in action. Watch this video as you see what they are up to at the moment. The world is united by an enemy. A virus that is stealing lives and spreading fear. For years to come, we will be remembered for how we responded. For staying home and protecting our communities. And also for loving our global neighbours. We will be remembered for praying, for giving, to help them respond. In Afghanistan, Nepal, Mozambique, Sri Lanka, Chad, Albania and across the globe. For feeding the hungry, for counselling the sick for providing protective equipment on the front lines, for helping to stop the spread. Remembered for being united, together. Remembered for standing in solidarity. The world is hurting and we can help. BMS World Mission is responding to the coronavirus pandemic. We're helping to coordinate the Global Baptist response and we're doing it now in the name of Jesus. You can be a part of it. You can stand in solidarity with people around the world fighting coronavirus and feeling its effects. You can look back on this time and know that you did everything in your power to help. You can respond today.
I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing I am a friend of God Do send me pictures of any of towers you built. I'd love to see them, but I hope they're looking better than mine because mine clearly is a tower of disappointment. And the Tower of Babel was simply a tower of disappointment. It was never completed. It was never finished. It was never what was hoped for. It was never what was dreamed of. It was a tower of disappointment and it was never going to be what it was hoped to be. They were building that tower in a scary, uncertain world. Scary that they didn't want to go and fill the world. Uncertain of what the future might be. And so they decided to stop. And they decided to build a tower for themselves. They decided to think about themselves. Think about the I in them. And so they built this tower. And as they built this tower, they were looking for acceptance. They were looking for significance and they were looking for security. They thought they could find acceptance from themselves and from one another. They thought they could find significance in building. And they thought they could find security and protection from their city and their tower. But the problem was it ended in disappointment because there's nothing wrong in looking for acceptance, significance and security in a scary, uncertain world. And our world certainly at the moment is scary and uncertain. But the problem was they tried to find it in themselves. They looked at the I, 
They said, let us, how can we find acceptance, significant and security? They were building for themselves. They'd forgotten that the only place they could truly be human, truly find acceptance, significance and security was in God. In God loving them, in God giving them purpose and in God protecting them. But then rejecting that and trying to find it in themselves, <coughs> they built, built the tower of disappointment and only found isolation. They found that as they built their city walls, they were isolated from others. They also found idolatry, that they decided to worship, no doubt, that Tower of Babel, the thing that they had made. And they worshipped what they had created and what they had made. And they'd also sought immediacy. They sought to find satisfaction and pleasure in the immediate not looking to the future. And can I suggest that many of us are seeking to find our acceptance, significant security in our relationships, in what we're trying to build, in our successes, in our hopes and our dreams. And can I say they'll always end up as a tower of disappointment. They'll always lead to isolation because as you seek success, you push others away. They will always lead to idolatry because you'll think you've created and achieved things on your own and you will worship that or you'll worship yourself. And they'll always lead to immediacy, what you can get now, the immediate joy, the immediate pleasure, the immediate high. But it will always end in a tower of disappointment, never bringing acceptance, significance and security in which you were found to God. It will lead to confusion as it did here. It will lead to separation and it will lead to rejection. But the good news is on this Pentecost is God wants to reverse that. He wants to reverse our towers of disappointment and he wants to give us acceptance, significance and security in him. And the way he chooses to do that and the way we can know that is by being filled with the Holy Spirit. Is by because Jesus has died on a cross to forgive us our sins, because he rose again to give us that future eternal life. He's ascended into heaven so that we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, so we can find acceptance in the love of God. We can find significance in looking and living our lives for the glory of God ourselves. And we can find security in the power of the resurrection, that power that is in us. And so on this Pentecost day, as you look at your towers of disappointment, as you look at a scary, uncertain world, can I suggest that what you need is a Pentecost? You need the Holy Spirit to fill you, as it did on the day of Pentecost. Fill you with that acceptance of God's love that will overflow into worship and praise. That you'll receive a power to know that you are protected in this life and forever. And that you will have significance. Because as what we build here for the glory of God will last for eternity. So how can we know that? How can we receive the filling of the Spirit? And I just want to read from Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, some words of Jesus about how we can be filled with the Holy Spirit. He says this, So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who seeks finds. The one who asks receives. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And so as we come to hear these words of Jesus, I know that we are seeking many things. We're asking for lots of things. We're knocking to have new avenues and new doors opened for us. 
And that's where we come. And we come looking for the acceptance, significance and security in that. But can I ask, whatever you're asking for, whatever you're seeking for, whatever you're knocking for, as Jesus says, it can only find its fulfilment as you receive the Holy Spirit. And so can I ask, as you, whatever you are desiring, asking and seeking, it can only be found completely in fulfilment as you ask for the Holy Spirit and receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And so can I ask you on this Pentecost Sunday that Jesus came into this world to die, to forgive you your sins, to rise again so that you're believing in him, you could have everlasting life in God's new kingdom of justice and joy and eternity. But he ascended into heaven so that you could receive right now the fullness of the Holy Spirit. But some of us doubt whether we will receive. Some of us doubt that if we ask, will we really receive? But Jesus says, everyone who asks, everyone who seeks, everyone who knocks, this is for everyone. He emphasises it. Repetition, inclusive for all people. So do not doubt that when you ask, you will receive. But some people say, well, why is that? The reason we know that we can receive is because Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. On that day of Pentecost, when Peter preached his first sermon, he declared that Jesus is Lord because he died for the forgiveness of sins. He rose and ascended into heaven. And so therefore he is given the gift of the Holy Spirit for all. So everyone. So don't doubt. Some of us may not doubt, but we're afraid. We don't know what sort of gift the Holy Spirit is. We don't know too much about the Holy Spirit. But Jesus says, if your son asks you for a fish, will we give him a snake? Or if he asks you an egg, will you give him a, a scorpion? The Holy Spirit, Jesus has said, is a good gift. It's the fulfilment of all your dreams, hopes and desires. It's the way to find acceptance, security and significance in our scary, uncertain world. It is a good gift. And as we heard at the beginning of the service, through some of those testimonies of the people uh, from this church, it is a good gift when we receive the Holy Spirit. It changes us. It's transformative. And it fills us with that peace, love and security. It's a good gift. So don't be afraid to ask for it. And finally, there are those who think they are inadequate think they have to do things, think God won't give them the Holy Spirit, may give some people but not them because they're full of shame and guilt. But again Jesus is, says how much far more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to anyone who asks him. It's not just for the pastors, it's not just for the spiritual, it's for those who feel guilty and shamed, who feel they're not good enough, who know that their towers are a tower of disappointment and no one's going to appreciate that. This is for those who ask. So simply the requirement to find that acceptance, security and significance in God is to come to Jesus. Believe that he died for the forgiveness of your sins, that he rose to give you life everlasting and he ascended into heaven so that the Holy Spirit could fill you. So that's what we're going to do. And on this Pentecost Sunday, I pray that you simply will come and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you. And Paul reminds us in Ephesians, this isn't just for uh, people who haven't experienced the fullness of the Spirit before. This is something we need to keep on asking. Paul tells us in Ephesians to be filled and keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. So whoever you are, we need to ask for the Holy Spirit to refresh us, to fill us, to fill us with the love of God, to fill us with that we're accepted by God, that we can call out Abba, Father to God, to know that he cares and is for us, to know his protection, his security, his security in this life and through this life for life everlasting and for significance. That as we live our life for him, we will have significance for eternity. So come, seek the filling of the Spirit. 
Don't doubt, don't be scared, and don't feel it's for others. It's for you as we come to Jesus. And so we're simply in a minute going to pray that God's Holy Spirit will fill us on this Pentecost day. For those of you who are new, who haven't even accepted Jesus, you just need to come and believe in Jesus, that he died on the cross and rose again, and then ask for the Holy Spirit. For those of us who do believe that Jesus died on the cross to forgive us and rose again for eternal life, we just need to ask and say, come Holy Spirit. What will it look like? Well, only God's Spirit determines that. But as I read my scripture, we see that it fills us with emotion. It fills us, we know that we're loved. We cry out, Abba, Father, Paul tells us. On the day of Pentecost, they started declaring the wonders and glory of God. They started worshipping. They started to enjoy just wanting to praise God and sing out to him and declare his praises. It overflows. They spoke in languages they didn't know. And still, sometimes when we're filled with the Spirit, more often than not, I, in my experience, people start when they allow God's Spirit to speak in other languages that they don't know. They're filled with the joy and love and they're filled with a power and they're filled with a boldness to want to share this good news that they have received with others. So let's God do what he wants to do. But let us know that as we ask him to fill us with the experience, we'll have that knowledge that we're accepted by God. We're loved by God. We'll know that we're secure in him. And we all know that we can have significance as we live for him. So can I invite you with me just to pray this simple prayer that we may know the Holy Spirit come and fill us. To fill us afresh. And as in the early church, we read that they lifted up their hands so that they could receive. And you may find it helpful to lift up your hand as we pray. We notice that they kneeled on their knees to pray to recognise they are asking God for something. And you may find it helpful to kneel. But as we come, let us just pray on this day with the with the so uncertain and of the future, with a scary future for us all, with all that we've carried in the past. Let us now come and ask God to refresh us, to fill us with his Holy Spirit. Let me pray. Lord Jesus, we believe you died on the cross to forgive us our sins. So I ask you to forgive my sin. Lord Jesus, three days later, you rose again to give us that everlasting life so that we know that we can be part of the new heaven and the new earth when everything is restored. And so I receive your eternal life. And Lord Jesus, you ascended into heaven so that you could send the Holy Spirit into me into me as an individual, to fill my life completely, to fill it with the love of God so I know that I'm accepted, to fill me with the power of the resurrection to know that I am secure and safe, and to fill me with a boldness to live for God in this world, to have significant, to make a difference in my family, in my church, in my world, for the glory of God. So Lord Jesus, send your Holy Spirit Fill me and baptise me with your Holy Spirit now. And so we say, come, Holy Spirit. And we just take a moment believing that when we ask, we receive. When we seek, we find. When we knock, the door will be opened. So if you've prayed that prayer, the Holy Spirit is now filling you. Don't shut yourself away from this, but allow him to do that. Maybe as you pray, asking, knocking, seeking for what you want, you'll find fulfilment as God fills you with his Holy Spirit. We're going to sing a lovely song called O Come to the Altar as we close this time together. But it's really a prayer that as we come to Jesus, we can find our thirst is quenched by the Holy Spirit. So as we sing this song, come to Jesus 
and allow him to quench your thirst with the Holy Spirit. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is and the what a Savior Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah Christ is risen Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found
Well, thank you for joining us at One in for Baptist Church online. We're here every Sunday at half past ten. Uh, hopefully soon we'll be back in our building, but until then, do join us, do connect with us, uh, do message us, do comment on our YouTube, Facebook, do stay afterwards if you're on Zoom to catch up and share testimony and fellowship together. But thank you for joining us on this Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church. We're just going to close by listening to that lovely song, The UK Blessing. And it's a song which talks about what it is to receive the fullness of the Spirit, what that blessing looks like for us and for our children and our children's children as it overflows. So again, as you listen to this, allow God's Spirit to fill you, that you may know acceptance, significance and security in Him. If you're on Facebook Live or YouTube, we just hope you've been encouraged after this song. We will just close. Do comment how, what you thought, any questions you have. We'll try and get back to you. If you're on Zoom after this, we're going to go into breakout rooms and we encourage you to stay, to have fellowship with one another. And if God has spoken to you, if he has shared a word to you, if you've had a picture or a, a word stuck in your mind or a prophecy or something that God has spoken, do share that. Share that with me, share that in your breakout room, share that in one of the comments. It'd be lovely to hear what God is doing. So thank you for joining us. Hopefully we will see you next week at half past 10 and every week going forward. It's great on the birthday of the church. We hope as a church we are growing and we hope more and more will join us over the coming weeks. God bless you all. Bye for now.
pray a blessing. Mana rain down from heaven. This isn't second guessing. We know that we are protected. May the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message. Grace and favors in your nature, in your essence. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family and your children and the children and the children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family and your children and the children and the children. Be a party and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may you stand up be a party Oh, oh, oh.